Peace, perfect peace, in this dark world of sin. The blood of Jesus whispers peace within. Peace, perfect peace, by thronging duties pressed. To do the will of Jesus, this is rest. It is enough, earth's struggle soon shall cease, and Jesus call us to heaven perfect peace. Good morning. It is uh, uh, Wednesday morning, and I uh, hope that uh, uh, your week's going great so far. Uh, no, it's Tuesday morning. Um, hope that your week's going great so far, and uh, that you are, are feeling encouraged and blessed and um um, receiving uh, the peace uh, that God offers to each and every one of us. We talked about peace yesterday a little bit. Um, we talked about Jesus in the boat, calming the storm and telling the storm, peace, be still, and that he brings us peace in the midst of the storms that that we're in. I was reading in John chapter 14, and I read verse 27, which uh, also uh, talks about peace. And Jesus said, uh, Peace I leave with you, peace, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. You know, not knowing things, not knowing how things are going to go, um, kind of brings its own kind of, of fear uh, when we experience that. and and But yet, experience in and of itself makes people less nervous. It makes us less nervous to drive because we have experience driving. It makes us less nervous to fly if we've if we've flown before. Um, it makes us less nervous when we have thunderstorms because um, the majority of us have you know been through thunderstorms and and know what that's know, know what that's like. Uh, it makes us less nervous a lot of times to have medical procedures or, or, or injections or something like that, if we've already uh, been through some of those things, it tends to make us uh, less nervous. And, and um, when we've had those experiences, the, the experiences themselves don't change. Uh, it's still the same experience for the most part, same elements and things, but what changes is our, our expectations, you know, because... Of, of knowing uh, what is happening or what will happen next um, changes the way we feel about a lot of those things and it brings a confidence that uh, and greatly reduces the fear that we have sometimes in in those situations it brings kind of a sense of peace because of experience there are several times in this this passage and passages before and after this one that Jesus points out that he's preparing his disciples to, to hold fast in a, in a difficult time. Um, he, he says uh, on in verse uh, 29, he says, I've told you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe. He says the same thing in John chapter 13, verse 7. Um, he says it again in chapter 16. Uh, verse 4, he says, I've told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. And again, uh, again in chapter 16, verse 33, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And so this, he's kind of, this is the idea of I'm letting you know before it happens so that you know what to expect and you will have less uh, less fear. And you can have peace about whatever comes because I'm telling you beforehand. And this not only applies to his impending arrest and execution, but but to the persecution that, that Christians 
uh, face or and, and will face because of because of our faith. And he's telling us it's going to happen. You're you're going to have some troubled times. You're going. People are you know the world is going to hate you. But just know that, know that that's coming. Stand fast and have peace regardless of of those situations. And the peace that Christ offers is not like that of of the world. It's not the same kind of peace. The best that we can expect from uh, the natural world is is unfairness um and you know but even attempts to be uh, moral without god lead only to to frustration but but christ's peace here uh, refers to a hope and resur- uh, excuse me reassurance that goes beyond what a a fallen world can even can even offer um paul talks about that in philippians chapter 4 verse 7 when he said um, and, pe- and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And so this peace that Christ offers is that peace that passes all understanding. It, it doesn't always make sense in terms of the situation or the circumstances that we're in, but that's okay. Uh, it makes sense when we are in Jesus and when he tells us, I, I come to bring you peace. And when he, when he tells us to uh, take his burden because it's much lighter than our own burden, um, then it begins to make sense, and and it's a kind of peace that is a, is permanent. It's it's guaranteed. It's eternal, um, and we we read about read about that in Hebrews chapter six, eighteen and nineteen. Uh, says God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus who went before us has entered on our behalf. It's a permanent, guaranteed, eternal promise of of peace, of hope, of of reassurance. And here again, Christ encourages his followers to keep their hearts from fear and trouble. Take take heart. Don't, Don't let your hearts be troubled. And this is a repeat of, of the statement that Jesus used to start this particular passage in uh, uh, in chapter 14, uh, the very first verse of chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And he says this immediately after predicting Peter's cowardice um, in the previous chapter, verse 38. And so um, scholars are kind of, uh, suggesting that Jesus is distinguishing here between being troubled in one's spirit, meaning pain and unhappiness, as opposed to being troubled in one's heart, meaning fear and and despair. And Jesus was, I mean, he himself was said to have a troubled spirit at times, John eleven thirty three and thirteen twenty one. What he calls here is is not for Christians to be stone faced and, and inhuman, but rather to simply acknowledge the reality of suffering while at the same time trusting in God to make good on his promises. Just understand the reality that things are going to happen. Chaos is going to happen. Trouble is going to happen. Circumstances aren't always what we, we want them to be all the time, but yet the other reality is God is still with us. Jesus is in the boat with us like we talked about yesterday. And, and because of that, Regardless of the circumstance and, and things going on around us, uh, we have the awesome gift of a peace that passes all understanding. And so let us hold fast to that. Let us hold on to that. Let us stand, let us stand firm in that and live our life in the peace that Jesus offers to you and me, uh, regardless of what this whole world uh, tries to throw at us. Uh, each and every day. I love you guys. Hope this is encouraging to you. Continue to walk in peace. Uh, Continue to enjoy your relationship with God uh, amidst the craziness and, and the chaos because God is a good God and he's a good God all the time. Have a great day. Words of life. Words of hope.